Sometimes, even in the secular world, we encounter cases of extraordinary, unexpected faith. People magazine once reported about such a case involving a professional acrobat, Henry Reichatan. When Henry was a younger man, he used to do a high wire act across Niagara Falls. During one of his performances, he requested a volunteer from the crowd to ride piggyback across the falls with him. A young lady, lady named Janik accepted the challenge. They've been married now for 25 years. Obviously, if someone will go with you across Niagara Falls on a tightrope, you can quit worrying about whether he or she genuinely believes in you. Extraordinary faith. Jesus encountered a man with that kind of faith. He was a centurion, probably in the army of Herod of Antipas. He was a man of authority and power. And he had some characteristics that endeared him to Jesus and also, I think, endears him to us. We know about this centurion, that he was a leader of probably 80 to 100 people. We know that he also had quite authority. He said, I tell them to go, and they go. I tell them to come, and they come. I tell the slave to do this, and they do it. In other words, he says, I'm telling them to jump, and they say, how high? He was a man of authority. He knew he could command all of these people. He knew he had that power in his speaking. Yet he had a slave who he valued highly. A slave. He had obviously heard about Jesus. Jesus' miracles, even in Luke the fourth chapter, we're in the seventh chapter right now, but in the fourth chapter we hear of those miracles. And if we spend any time in the Gospels, we know that word of mouth spread quickly about Jesus that Jesus was out performing miracles. And whenever word got to where Jesus, that Jesus is going to be here or Jesus is there, hundreds of people would flock to him, many of them for healing, all of them to see and hear who this man was. We knew that this centurion in this Bible passage has a soft spot for the Jews. He is not a Jew himself. He's a Roman centurion. He's a Gentile. And you know, up until now in the book of Luke, it's all been about Jesus and the Jews. This is a turning point. This is a story in which we now see that Jesus came for all. The Jewish elders had a soft spot for this centurion because he wasn't one of them, but yet it says in here that he helped him to build the synagogue. He helped them to build the synagogue, and he also loves our people. You get that humility. You get that kindness just from those few phrases. He built the synagogue. Jesus' presence in Capernaum that day was obviously one of those situations where people were coming to see Jesus, to touch Jesus. I think the important thing to note is to look back and remember they didn't really yet know who Jesus was, did they? A lot of people believed, a lot of people were yet to believe, but what they knew is that this person, Jesus, was important. This was someone they wanted to see, to know, but even more, they wanted him to touch them. They wanted healing. But more and more, we would hear in these, in these stories, it's like, was it faith? Or did they think of Jesus more of a magician? Someone who could do this magic. He would touch a leper and they would be healed. 
Magic? Perhaps people believed in many gods back then, and even now today. But this centurion was crystal clear that Jesus was not a magician. He wasn't a Jew. He wasn't a man of the cloth. He wasn't a man of anyone that you would expect to say, Jesus, just say the word and my servant will be healed. This passage is a turning point. This passage reminds us of our own faith. I don't know about you, but I don't care who it is, I'd never go across on a tightrope with someone, no matter what. And yet, we look at this scripture, and we admire the faith of the centurion. Now, what I want to be careful about here is to leave you guys thinking that your faith isn't strong enough. Because, of course, Scripture also tells us that we only need faith as small as a mustard seed. Remember? Faith as small as a mustard seed. And yet, here is this text lifting up this man of great faith. It said Jesus was amazed at his faith. What would it be like to have faith that left Jesus amazed? I think the key here, though, is where the centurion talks about his worthiness. He sent his friends ahead to find Jesus, to say, Jesus, we need you. The centurion slave is sick and almost dead. And then we hear that this centurion sends again some friends to say, tell Jesus, let's look at it here, he says, tell Jesus, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. That's the key. How many of you, if you were standing in Jesus' presence, would not feel worthy? would not feel worthy to ask for Jesus' love and forgiveness and healing. We know who we are. That centurion knew he was an outsider. He wasn't even an insider, someone from the synagogue. But he said, I am not worthy. Just speak the words and my servant will be healed. That is what amazed Jesus, this unexpected occurrence of faith. In a minute here, we're going to invite you to come forward if you like. There are bowls of sand, and there's a candle that you can light from our Christ candle. You can light that in prayer, for that person that I asked you to bring to mind at the beginning of the service. In worthiness, I invite you to come forward. As forgiven children of God, I invite you to step forward boldly to lift this person in healing. You can choose to sit in your seats if you'd like. There will be beautiful music provided by Andrea Van Gelder and her sister Heidi and her mom Sonia. There will also be the three of us pastors up by the altar that you can come to and ask for prayer for that person that you lifted up in your heart, that God put in your heart. It's an important time that we pause, that we pause in worthiness, in our sinful selves, remembering that we are forgiven children of God. Come boldly, bring your request to God. When you come and light a candle, you may put it in the sand, and as we make a garden of candles, it will bring to mind all of those prayers for healing.
I do ask when you put the candles in, you put them as far to the back as possible so that when the others come, they may just fill into the front. It's not a have to, it's a get to, to come forward for prayer. No right or wrong. You may certainly pray boldly in your seats, but you may also come forward all the way to the altar if you'd like. We pause now for this time in our service to come forward for healing. 